Hey guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm explaining the new Audible Contrast Threshold Test and why it may be the best way to optimize your hearing aids for background noise. Coming up. There are a lot of different tests that your hearing care professional can put you through when they're performing a comprehensive hearing evaluation. Some of these tests include otoscopy to see if you have something like earwax inside of your ear canals, pure tone air conduction and bone conduction where you raise your hand when you hear beeps in order to find the softest level of sound that you can hear at different frequency ranges, word recognition testing to see how clearly you can understand speech in quiet, speech reception threshold testing to see the minimum amount of volume required for you to understand speech in quiet, and speech and noise testing to determine how much separation of speech you need from the noise to be able to hear in a complex listening environment. Each one of these tests is critical for your hearing care professional to understand your auditory system as well as recommend the best hearing aids for you. Not to mention, the data obtained in these different tests will determine how your hearing care professional sets up and programs your hearing aids for you. If any one of these different tests are not completed, it can lead to an improper recommendation of hearing aid technology and improper programming of your devices. Fortunately, most of the tests inside of this test battery are pretty standard at this point, but there is one of these tests that has some flaws that can negatively impact your hearing aid performance. But before I reveal which one of these tests is potentially flawed, if you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, it really helps out my channel because it gets these videos in front of a bigger audience. And while you're at it, if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos and I publish a ton of new videos every single week. That being said, it's really appreciated and a huge shout out to Oticon for sponsoring today's video, but more on them in a little bit. The test that I am talking about that is potentially flawed is the speech and noise test. Now technically there are several different speech and noise tests. You have for instance the QuickSyn, which stands for Quick Speech and Noise Test. You have the HINT, which stands for Hearing and Noise Test. And you have the WIN, which stands for Words and Noise Test. The quick sin is probably the most common of the three. This particular test requires you to repeat sentences that you're listening for among background noise, and that background noise gets louder and louder like you're in a noisy restaurant. This calculates what is known as your signal to noise ratio loss score, which is the amount of separation you need of speech over the background noise in decibels before you can understand 50% of the speech. The hint test also requires that you listen for sentences and repeat them back out loud, but the volume level of the sentences goes up and down while the background noise stays constant. Again, we're trying to identify the signal to noise ratio difference that you require to understand 50% of the speech. Then we have the win test, which is similar to the hint test, but instead of listening for sentences, you're listening for individual words that will go up and down in volume with a steady level of background noise to identify what signal to noise ratio level you need to understand, you guessed it, 50% of the speech. So you're probably thinking to yourself, with all of these different types of tests, we probably have this speech and noise testing figured out, right? Not so fast. There are actually a few different problems that could present themselves with these different tests. First, these tests are language dependent, which means that if they are not normed to the language that you speak, the results may not be accurate. Second, some of these tests can take considerable amount of time to complete. So if your hearing care professional doesn't have the time necessary to actually do them, or their time is being restricted by your insurance company, you may not have these tests completed at all. Third, some of these speech and noise tests require additional equipment and additional space. And if your hearing care professional does not have either of these, then you really can't get these tests done either. And fourth, even if your hearing care professional completes one of these speech and noise tests, there is no clear understanding as to how they would actually use this data to improve your hearing aid fitting to optimize your ability to understand speech and background noise. This is where the new Audible Contrast Threshold Test, otherwise known as the ACT test, comes into play. The ACT test was designed to predict a hearing impaired individual's speech and noise ability and solves each one of these problems in a very clever way. Let me go ahead and explain how this test actually works. Once your audiogram is completed, which means that you've already raised your hand or clicked a button when you heard beeps presented to you and your hearing care professional has plotted your X's and O's on your audiogram, 
the ACT test is automatically adjusted for your hearing loss thresholds between 250 hertz and 4000 hertz. Now just like pure tone air conduction testing, the ACT test is performed when you have inserts inside of your ears or headphones on. Then varying levels of noise are played inside of your ears as you're listening for a siren sound among that noise, at which point you indicate whether you heard the siren. This test is looking for the amount of separation or contrast that is required for you to hear the siren among the noise. This is called your normalized contrast level or NCL and it's in decibels. Here is the range of values that can be achieved on the ACT test and the lower the value, the less contrast that is required to understand speech in background noise. If the value is between a negative four and a positive four dB NCL, your predicted aided speech and noise performance with properly programmed hearing aids is in the normal range. And you will likely require only minimal application of adaptive hearing aid features such as noise reduction or directionality when in complex listening environments. If your value is between four and seven dB NCL, then you're predicting to have mild difficulty in background noise with properly programmed hearing aids and slightly higher noise reduction and directionality requirements when in complex listening environments. If your value is between 7 and 10 dB NCL, you are predicted to have moderate difficulty in background noise with properly programmed hearing aids and may require your adaptive hearing aid features set to a slightly lower than maximal level when in complex listening environments. And if your value is between 10 and 16 dB NCL, you are predicted to have severe difficulty in background noise with properly programmed hearing aids and will likely require your adaptive hearing aid features set to maximum levels when in complex listening environments. Scores in this range may also require that you use additional assistive listening devices like remote microphones as well as auditory training. Because the ACT test does not use actual speech, there is no language barrier with this test. Test. It only takes two to three minutes to complete. It does not require any additional space or equipment other than a compatible audiometer. And the test results can be applied directly to your hearing aid programming for directionality and noise reduction settings. And one of the first hearing aid manufacturers set up to utilize this ACT NCL value is Oticon, today's video sponsor. The Audible Contrast Threshold Test was developed over the course of seven years by the Interacoustics Research Unit the Center for Applied Audiology Research, and Oticon's Ericsholm Research Center. By participating in its development, Oticon is the first hearing aid manufacturer equipped to utilize this normalized contrast level value and incorporate it into their hearing aid program to optimize your settings inside of more sound intelligence. This ensures that the amount of adaptive features such as deep neural network noise reduction and directionality are set to the optimal starting levels. For instance, if your audible contrast threshold value is between negative four and positive four, your more sound intelligence level would be set at a lower level. If you had a value between four and seven, your more sound intelligence level would be set to mild. Between seven and 10, it would be set at a moderate level and between 10 and 16, it would be set at a high level. When the NCL value is taken into account during your Oticon hearing aid programming, it can ensure that you're not setting these digital features at too strong of a level, which can take away the naturalness of sound, and ensure that you're not setting them at too weak of a level, which can make you struggle more in a background noise scenario. No matter what, performing some form of background noise testing is critical to identify how much separation or contrast you need of the speech versus the background noise so you can function in noisy environments. This way your hearing care professional isn't just shooting in the dark when making treatment recommendations for you and when programming your digital features inside of your hearing aids. And given that the ACT test actually removes a lot of the limitations from these other speech and noise tests, I expect this to become extremely popular among hearing care professionals when they're testing you in background noise. As of right now, this test is so new that not every audiometer is even equipped to be able to perform the ACT test. But with time, I suspect that your hearing care professional will be able to to perform the ACT test to identify how to perfectly program your hearing aids for background noise.